everyone. We're here with Megan from Casket Robbery. Uh, Megan, thank you. I greatly appreciate you joining me tonight to to bullshit about all things casket robbery. Yeah, thank you. So um, you are not original to the band, right? Like band started in 2011-ish? Yeah, around 2011. It started off as like uh, just like a, a fun studio project with Corey and the original vocalist. And I think they, you know, they they did a lot of super fun songs in the beginning and realized, you know, they liked playing out live and it just kind of kept being more and more of a thing as the years went on. But yeah, I joined in 2017, I want to say. Um, yeah. How's that? So since you joined the band, how has it been for you? Um, It's been wonderful. It, I honestly, when I said yes to filling in on on this tour that we did in 2017 um i didn't think that i was going to be joining as a full member you know and love it so much i had been in a metalcore band before this and was doing like you know half singing half screaming at the time so to, to make this jump um of all harsh vocals uh was a big step for me and I fell in love on the tour and it's just it's been going great ever since right on well you've got a great fucking stage presence um I like the band as a whole I think you guys you know really crush it I've caught you a couple of times you know I saw you at uh mag bar here in Louisville with the convalescence oh, yes. and then I caught you guys at the foundry in Cleveland oh yes also with the convalescence. Yes, yes, that was so I love the foundry so much. Oh my gosh. That's one of our favorite places. Magbar is really cool too. But yeah, we have such a blast. Corey is actually here. <laughs> hey Tom, how's it going? Hey Corey, how are you, man? Good, good, good. Thanks. I appreciate you joining us in between your your scheduling, you know, making money stuff. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I'm glad I could be here. <laughs> right on. Um, so we'll we'll kind of switch from the live stuff. I know you guys have been you just got done recording a new album, is that right? So we just got done recording um our first single off of the new album. We're actually really hard at work um recording for the album right now. So um we decided to get one out of the way and jump into that. We shot a video for it the day before we left for tour. Um, shout out to the music factory for being incredible and letting us in their space to shoot a video on such short notice. Yeah, they awesome. Hit it up. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> I, I don't think I hit them up like a week ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, I, I love those places that you you get them short notice and they're like, yeah, we'll make it work. Like, fuck yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was it was very very nice. They they let us use the whole space and. We did our thing and got the heck out and got back on the road. Right on. Right on. So do you guys have a working title for the album or a title already? Or are you waiting to get a name for it? Um, we're waiting right now um, as things kind of develop. We we have a concept that we're kind of working with. And the first single that we release is, is like a puzzle piece in in that but uh it, it's gonna be really cool it's gonna be different um but I, I think it's just you know as as I think most most bands say when they have a new album it's just an evolution of us and what we plan to do with the band cool so it kind of expands on an already like like solid sound yeah definitely right. that's cool I like when uh obviously I like some bands that stick to their you know their method to writing it comes out it's almost like copy paste but you know what you're getting every time but i i really enjoy when a band has a good solid sound and then they're able to expand on it and you can you can look at them and go oh man that era of the band was fucking phenomenal for whatever reason and when you hear those guitar tones or whatever you're like oh i know exactly what that comes from hell yeah yeah that's that's yeah. really important to us to kind of stay true to what we are, but also definitely evolve. I did a lot of new fun things with my vocals on this first single um, that I've been playing with. And, and I think it's just, you know, it's, it's just the next step in our sound. Right yeah, on. 
was kind of a big push was to get more um, diversity on Megan's vocals because she's such an incredible vocalist. She can do anything. So it's kind of like, let's try to capture that more on this this album. Right on. Well, now I'm anxious to see you guys live again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like come on. Right? So you, you guys stay like you're a, a very like – fucking hardworking band i feel like you guys are always doing something on the road hitting it what what is the what's the motivation for you guys behind doing what you do i think we just we love to be on the road and seeing people we were pretty fortunate to have this kind of like um upwards like momentum happen before covid and our our fan base is just is so incredible and so engaging especially online because they're freaking everywhere now and so for us to go out and meet all of these people that we talk to consistently online and make these relationships with are really important to us so you know being on the road and and touring right now is is a little tough but it's also really rewarding and and a lot of fun for us I feel like you guys are getting a lot of um, a lot of good press. You know, a lot of people speak very, very highly of, you know, you all collectively, uh, you know, specifically the live show, because it's um, it's entertaining. It's captivating. Right. It keeps keeps people coming back for more. And as a band, that's obviously what you want. Right. Yeah, we I mean, that's that's one of the biggest things that we we put everything into is our live set is you know, the, the consistent, I think thing that's been said about our live performances is the energy. And, um, that's really important to us. We, we throw down everything that we can every single night. Um, and sometimes to our detriment, but, um, it's fun and it makes it fun and it makes it, um, memorable for people too. So we, we have a blast. Yeah. Corey breaks his, I mean, fingers and hands con- like yeah. <laughs> by slamming things constantly. Yeah, yeah. Our, my <laughs> guitar takes a really bad beating and I feel bad. Like, oh, I don't know. Allergies. Usually like three or four days into the tour, my guitar is just, it just feels beat. You know? <laughs> and then I've got to like restring it and usually adjust the, the, the actual truss rod on the neck and just fine tune it a little bit and keep to keep it going um but that's the fun part about it i don't know i like i like throwing my guitar around yeah you know. you're over the, at the end of the night you're like i'm sorry baby i didn't yeah. mean to hurt you <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. that's awesome um so you know i know the other guys in the band too brian and austin who who yeah. seem to be a, a you know really solid fit to the band how how do you guys feel um they've come in and done for the band i guess well we've had we've had brian around for i mean for a really long time and have known him um through his previous bands and stuff um so he kind of just you know fit right in and did his little brian thing and it's it's been great ever like the whole time in austin we picked up a little over a year ago right a yeah, year yeah, yeah. um and he has fit in perfectly it's it's so nice because we spend so much time together um trapped in a very small space and it's they're wonderful all of us get along like it's just it's it's really easy um not only did they have remarkable stage presence and add to our live show and really like encompass what casket is. Um, but they're just wonderful people. So yeah. we're, we're pretty, we're pretty lucky that all of us have kind of meshed in that way. Um, and have kind of become this, this family. Cause we spend a lot of time together and sometimes in, in pretty, you know, like I, not stressful situations, but living with each other on the road and in small spaces and through exhaustion and all of that. So um, it's been great. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, well, you, you need those people, someone you can get along with because you, 
you know, it, it might not always be stressful, but there are, you know, you know, um, high emotion situations and, you know, without, without a pretty solid foundation as a relationship, I think it could really easily fracture, um, a relationship in a band, you know? Yeah. I think from day one, like we've all had each other's backs no matter what. And that is really refreshing. Like they know I have all their backs. They've been there for like, it's just, we all take care of each other, especially out on the road. But, um, yeah, I think it's just, they've, they've come in and, and it's just, they were the missing puzzle pieces. So that's really nice. Right on. Well, good. Like, I, you know, I love those guys. They're so fucking, they're super nice. You guys are super cool. Also, um, <laughs> you know, to, to, I think to have that collectively, um, uh, there's, uh, from a, a fan's perspective, I think a fan can, can see that see the way you guys gel on stage. And then when you get off again and you you're able to have interactions with fans, it's like, it's not one band member. It's the whole fucking band that, you know, you, you can kind of just chat with and, and the accessibility to, to musicians now at live shows is uh, I feel like it really helps grow the fan base. Right. Yeah. It's, it's really important to us. Um, we got that comment this last tour that we just got off of. Um, we got that comment a couple of times, how surprised people were that we were just like out and hanging out. Like I do our merch. I'm mm -hmm. behind that merch table the entire night. I, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy talking to people unless I'm really sick and trying to save my voice. But um, that's a huge, huge thing to us to be walking around to watching every single band that plays that night to talking to all of the band members to talking to the fans um it's been something that has been really important to us um has helped us um gain more fans and just cultivate those relationships and it's something that is going to continue to be really important to us right on yeah don't lose that right like yeah Especially, I feel like the way you guys are going, uh, you guys played what Milwaukee Metal Fest last year. Right? We did. And yeah. Jamie spoke very highly about you, which is yeah. like, that's like a, oh my God, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of really, really nice, um, amazing things said about us um, from from Milwaukee last year. And we are so grateful. Uh, to be coming back this year. Um, we love Jamie. We love J We love the entire organization is they are top notch. And what they did last year was pretty freaking incredible. Well, I, I think, you know, Jamie is uh, at first, he is a fan of music yeah. and, you know, to see, to see him translate that and bring back Milwaukee metal fest and a, a uh, the new England thing, I think also, yep. right. He's bringing back and then he's got the label. He's like, he just loves music and to see his, yeah. see his passion for it. It's like, all right, you're not just right in, in this fantastic hardcore band. You're, you're also out here like promoting other bands and trying to get everyone and, um, to bring the community together and just rise up together, you know? He really is. He and I think he's gotten a lot of crap about you know, which every festival does. I think um, for a lot of the bands and too much this and too, like that. But the thing about that fest is it is accessible, and he is doing the right thing and he knows what he's doing and he's so freaking happy all the time. I just I love being around him because he's so smiley and just happy. Yeah. <laughs> It's like he's it's infectious. Yeah, you know? it is. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at any time you see him, he's like, ah, hey, what's up? Blah, blah, blah. You're like, all right, dude. Like <laughs> I, I love you too. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, so through the years of you all like working hard to build this band to what it is today, um, is there a moment in time, let's say aside from Milwaukee last year? Is there a moment in time that you guys were like, oh man, like this is why we do this. We want to be, we wanted to be in this moment right now. 
I think I had a moment like that when we opened for Cannibal Corpse a couple years ago. Um, that was really big for me. Um, there have been a couple, uh, yeah, there have been a couple instances. Um, this last year, the tours that we've done, um, I've noticed a shift in a lot of the venues and a lot of these shows are now becoming more all ages shows. Mm -hmm. So we've had a lot of younger fans and that's not something that we've really ever had access to before. Um, so the amount of younger people um, that are getting a hold of our music and getting excited about it and then that I get to spend time with at shows, um, those are the moments that have made me like, this is really cool. This is why I need to be doing this. Um, I walk away from every single interaction, picture, all of it, just with that feeling of being full of gratitude that we can, that we get to do this. Yeah. That's yeah. fucking awesome. I think for me, um, big moment, the cannibal corpse was actually the first one that crossed my mind. Yeah. <laughs> that, that show was very cool. Like being asked to open for cannibal in your hometown, um, that was very cool. I was so scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely nerve wracking. But uh, the, the other one that there was like a kind of like almost like a light switch moment was was just releasing Rituals of Death, like that album. Um, something about that, how how we, I don't know what it is. We just released that and, and then hit the road and um, it was just received really well. And yeah. It's, it's been really nice um, playing those songs live and having that uh, reception on that album yeah getting the reception you're like oh we are a real band all right <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah cool sure, yeah. that's exactly <laughs> yeah that's what it felt, felt like for, for that album specifically and you know um yeah yeah that's fucking awesome those are those are really good moments i i really like the fact that now more shows are doing the all ages thing because i feel like you know I'm such an old man. Cause I'm like back in my day, um, <laughs> but you know, like way back when the only all ages shows that, that you went to essentially that I went to were hardcore and punk shows. Cause the metal shows were all, they were all in bars. So you're looking yeah. at 18 and 21 and up, you know, um, mag bar actually, um, they recently started doing all ages shows and it's, it's great, but it's weird because I've been yeah. going to that place for 20 years, you know, and you, we go in there and it's like, what's, what's this kid doing? Yeah. Here? You know, but, <laughs> yeah, uh, but it, it really helps pack out the shows. And then I think it, it helps a band with longevity, right? Yeah. Cause it, it's, if you, as long as you guys are still putting out music, those kids that enjoyed that live show are, they're going to keep, buying the music and you build this this huge fan base because as as they get older they're like oh we're i'm gonna go see this band again you gotta come with me you know and they're bringing their friends and and it yeah. becomes it, it it becomes a big family right yeah i think yeah. it's super important especially this time period in the world right now is just seeing the all ages stuff and um having like an almost like a new energy at shows. Yeah. Um, so that's huge. And, and yeah, like you said, that'll, that will last, uh, that'll like rejuvenate things for in the long run, you know? Absolutely. We did. Um, I went to see Brian and Austin's other band, illusion of fate at death in the Midwest in Indianapolis. Oh yeah. Black circle, right? Yeah. 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 Which is, yeah. Know, that Black is so cool. It is. It really is. And to see, kids in there jamming out it was so great there were i don't know three or four kids in the mosh pit as soon as iof got off stage they like ran over like dude you guys were awesome can we get autographs and i'm like oh, yeah. yeah dude like and I, I, <laughs> I randomly sat next to like the one of the kids parents and he walked over and he was like oh my god they were so fucking cool oh my god mom blah, blah, blah. and i was just like ah dude i love that i love seeing yeah. the excitement and the energy you know yeah and it like we this tour that we play did last fall we had a lot of all ages shows and a lot of um 
a lot of them showed up to this tour that we just got off of in the spring. So it, it's, it was just really, I just love it. I really do. I, I love it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, I had the ability to start taking my, my kids when they were younger, um, God, they're fucking 18 and 20 now. <laughs> Uh, you know, I try to take them to shows and to see, to see the older fans reception to them. They're like, Oh, my daughter's first show was, um, Max and Igor Cavalera doing oh, yeah. the return yeah. to roots, you know? And that was, of course, growing up a, a Sepultura guy was like, I'm like, we're going to go. And she's banging her head. One of the- <laughs> one of the opening bands came out and was like, you're the coolest fucking kid. And they're like signing drumsticks and giving her CDs. And she was yep. like, Oh my oh. Yep. Oh. And I'm like, keep it. Don't lose it. Right. Like she's like, okay. And still every once in a while, she's like, I want to go see devil in the darkness. And I'm like, they're, they don't even play together anymore. Kiddo. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing. I like, I see a kid at a show. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you, everything i'm giving you stickers you're getting pics you're getting drumsticks all of it yeah (laughs) it's like when you when you buy a house when you go to a title company generally they have like bowls of chocolates on the table (laughs) and it's like they do that so you're you're happy right you're getting this dopamine rush while you're signing the papers you're like best moment ever you know it's the same way at a show you go to a show free stickers, free picks. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Always. So um, early on for you guys, like let's start with you, Corey, because you're going to leave here momentarily. Um, what, what got you into playing music? What, was there like a, an artist where you're like, man, I, I want to do that. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a, an odd, a, odd story. It wasn't, it wasn't a band in particular um, initially, but like, okay. So my, my dad always listened to like ACDC and stuff. So that was, that was always in my brain, you know, but I remember one specific moment that kind of triggered, like that I want to play an instrument was um, I think it was in grade, grade school. I don't know what grade um, I was pretty young, maybe like, um there was an acoustic guitar player that came in and just gave a performance in our gym right just him solo playing guitar and for some reason my class specifically our teacher had to do something right after his performance she said just hang tight in the gym um i'll be right back so we got to sit with this guy and he we asked him questions and stuff you know about playing guitar and all this stuff and that was like the initial like hey that's something like maybe i could do that And then my mom had a guitar in the house from when she was a kid, um, started taking guitar lessons. And of course, then from there, it was like, you know, the ACDC, I want to learn ACDC, get rid of the acoustic guitar, get an electric guitar. Um, And then it kept progressing, you know, like, oh, what's heavier than ACDC, Iron Maiden, um, Megadeth, Metallica. uh, Then it was like children of Bodom, (laughs) like, you know, like crazy (laughs) stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all guns blazing from there. I was like just trying to get into all this crazy music I had never even knew existed. So that was it for me. Yeah. Right on. That's a great fucking story. Yeah. And I, you know, I wish I remember that guy's name that came and played guitar because that, that was truly like something that I, I just, and I'll never forget that you know being able to talk to that guy but i just wish i remembered who he was call um, your old teacher i'll bet i bet she or he remembers yeah yeah you know I mean? that's a good idea <laughs> <laughs> uh what about you megan uh i grew up singing since i can remember um i was always in choir all that i did show choir in high school um Wanted to join my first band, ended up forming a metalcore band, um, like a little local metalcore band that was super fun. Um, right around the time I met him and I did that for a while and, and 
really wanted like initially they were like let's do kind of like like fly leaf and like sing and scream and I was like all right I'll figure out how to do harsh vocals whatever um I ended up just falling in love with with gutturals and and wanted to get heavier and heavier and and heavier with the sounds and and so he kind of just um really encouraged me to develop that and and take lessons and and that so I I did that and just kind of developed my sound and then this fell into my lap and um I just it's so much fun like pushing my voice um to do new things and and yeah so that's really that's really like I don't I just I wanted to like do progressively heavier and heavier stuff and we laugh all the time that like I listen to heavier like more extreme death metal than I think you do yeah and um like even most of the boys I think I do um and it just I that just kind of fuels me to keep going and like to do new stuff I'm like hey I want to do that let's try it hell yeah good for you keep kicking ass (laughs) Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I try to, I tried to show that show my daughter. Um, she's like, I don't know if I could, if I can do this. So I always try to show her like female artists that, that are out doing things right. That, yeah. you know, I guess we look at as like predominantly male, uh, you know, male dominated areas. I'm like, listen to this. I played her one band and I was like, oh, listen to this girl singing. She's like, that is not a fucking girl. I'm like, <laughs> yes, yes, it is. That is a girl. <laughs> she was like, I don't even remember who it was. That was uh, probably like 10 years ago. Yeah. Like, like, do it. Whatever, whatever makes you happy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And there are, there are just so many, I mean, we try to not pigeonhole like gender and stuff in any of this, but there, there are so many like just women out there just killing it yeah. in extreme metal right now. And it's, it's wonderful. It's just wonderful that I get to like befriend all of them. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's nice to see like a lot more um, acceptance and not like gatekeeping. You know, when it, when it comes to that, you know, you, you go to a show and that's, I always relate it. You you go to a show and we're all there for the same purpose. You know, nothing on the outside fucking matters. I don't care what your political affiliation is, sexual orientation. None of that shit matters. We're here to have a good fucking time. It's the one thing that aside from being human, it's the one thing I feel connects us all without judgment. Yeah. And I, I, I love it. Like taking the gender out of it. Too. Like I, like I said, it's so important for me to like, keep expanding my, my vocals and my range and things like that. It's just so cool to like me see like a guy doing stuff and be like, I want to do that. But then like seeing someone like Cheney from Entheos and the, the stuff that she does and Bridget from stabbing and the way that she does vocals is so cool. And Tanya, from monochromatic black it's it's everyone has their own sound yeah um but it's just it's so cool to see just the development of everyone and how there is literally room for everyone in this um we're just making weird noises that's it that's it (laughs) that's That's it let's get weird with it who cares (laughs) that's fucking awesome um so you guys uh, you guys have another tour coming up, right? We do so soon. Um, in mid June, we are heading out with Gorgatron and with Varath, and we are really, really excited. It's it's one uh, it's a longer tour. Um, we're hitting the West Coast first, which we have not been out west in I want to say six years. Um. So that's fun. We're hitting a lot of new spots that we haven't hit before and then some old ones that we have. And then we'll kind of swing down south, um, which we have been south, I think, more than anywhere at this point. Um, So we're really looking forward to that and hanging out with um, both of those bands because they're both just incredible. And and Gorgafron's releasing an album on that tour. So that's going to be awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think Marath is too. I think they are too. Yeah. That's fucking exciting. Yeah. So, so you guys are hitting the West. The Southwest is going to be super fucking hot then. Just be yeah, prepared. It is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yep. Yep. And we, I think the last time we did it, it was summer. It was, it was around the exact same time. Um, so we're going to be a little warm in the van. Um, lots of water. So if you come out to our shows, we really love water. Yeah. Br <laughs> bring water. <laughs> we did. Uh, we took the kids out West. Last, well, I say out West. We, we did a tour. We drove out through like Kansas and Colorado and Utah. We hit Cali and we, we came back through Texas and I think through most of the time, the average temp was about 118. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. We're going to have some fun. It was warm. <laughs> so it's just a little warm. We're going to be using a lot of Febreze in the van. I have a feeling. Oh, yeah. We should just buy stock in it now, probably. Now, for sure. Yeah. Not. Totally yeah. doing that as soon as we get off this. <laughs> Uh, so is there a venue that, that you like playing at more than anywhere else? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, there's so, honestly, there's so many, we have been fortunate enough to do a couple rounds of the U S um, locally. We have our favorites like high noon in Madison, um, the majestic in Madison, the crucible, um, there's a couple up north that we love playing, like Zymergy Brewing is just always fun. Um, we talked about the Foundry in Lakewood. Yep. Um, Black Circle was rad. There are just so many. Um, Bonds Rock Bar in San Antonio um, is always really great to us. Yeah, we've been fortunate enough to play just incredible venues that we have fun going to um, the brickyard in Knoxville, Tennessee. We love, um, I could keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I can go on and on. <laughs> so does one of those stick out as like when for you, like you're like every tour, I want to make sure to hit that. Cause that place is just so fucking awesome. Um, I really love the foundry. I really do. Um, they, they treat us well. We, we have a blast at shows there. Um, and yeah, I just, I just love it. We're, I honestly, any of them, I would be happy hitting on every tour. There was also, uh, the King of Clubs in Ohio Columbus. was, oh my gosh, they, they are, they are incredible. And what they're doing is, is really incredible too that stage was so much fun to play <laughs> yeah that like that's it's kind of a tall stage and that room is that it room's is. big and it's got that balcony which is super cool yeah yeah we have a, i think i have a couple videos of us playing that one that's really sick because i had like the fog machine going and stuff and it was fun hell yeah that would be i'd, I'd like to play there sometime yeah so for you, like preparing for the show, what is your um, what's your warm up routine look like? Um, I I'm typically behind the merch table most of the night. Um, I try and be mindful of how much I'm talking because I like to talk. Um, so I will be pounding water most of the night. Um, I will say that some nights, uh, in if. If I do get sick on tour, I'm kind of prone to getting sick on tour, which sucks. Um, I will take a shot of whiskey. Um, and then I will go through my vocal warmups in back and I just throw it on my, my playlist on my phone. Um, for the past couple tours, uh, I not meant, not many people know this. I, I listened to Nightbringers by the Black Dahlia murder. Um, it just gets me amped. And ready to go. So uh, I change it up every every few tours, but that one's kind of stuck with me um, because they're my favorite. But 
that's usually my routine. I'll just go through a lot of my vocal warm ups throughout the day. I'm kind of constantly humming um, and doing like lip trills and things like that. I like annoying the boys with those. Um, and then I always have a, a tea bottle with me that any gas station as we're kind of driving along, I always fill with hot water and have um, like throat friendly tea for myself. Um, I've, I've unfortunately through a lot of our tours have gotten tour plague pretty bad. Um, so I've learned how to deal with that and not let it ruin my vocal cords and also be able to still perform every night. Um, so I've kind of developed my own routine to all of that and, and keep all the tools with me that I need just in case. <laughs> it's good. You know, it's, um, who was I talking to? I think Brian Zink from, from battle cross was saying, you know, you, you go through tour and, or you go through just playing music and when you're new, you don't know. Right. And you gain yep. the experience and then you, you learn, right. Oh, this was a mistake. I know how to fix it. Or, oh man, I, I know what to do when I'm getting sick and I have to still go out and, and perform. Yep. Right. My first tour um, was just slightly under a month and I, and I got pretty sick and she probably doesn't remember this at all, but I messaged Vicky Soraki from um, The Agonist. And I had, you know, I had seen that she gotten sick on her tour. And I was like, what do I do? What what can I do for myself? And she was there for me that whole time, like just messaging me, giving me advice on things. Um, and that meant the world to me at um, the Mary Zimmer um, who is in Luna Mortis with Corey, who is the most incredible voice teacher, um, who, who I took lessons from. She actually came out to our Milwaukee show on that tour and warmed me up and, and got all of that. So again, like I've just been really fortunate to, to have really awesome people in the industry that have had my back and to keep my vocals nice and healthy. Yeah. Well, it's good. You have that, right. Cause there's a, there's a lot of people out there that they go out and they, they don't know about, uh, warm up techniques or care for their voice. And they, they end up blowing out their voice and it just, yeah. what a rough thing to deal with as a vocalist, you know? Yeah. That, that is terrifying. And I always, I always laugh too, because it's also subjective on, on people's warm ups and things like that. You'll have, you know, I have my own thing that I'll, I'll do in my warmups. And I even have like a little portable nebulizer that I use to keep my vocal cords nice and moist throughout the day. And I'll bring that with me. And then you'll have some other person who's chain smoking, just throwing back shots, 15 beers, and that works for them. And that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, there's, there's so many different things that, you know, we all, it's our own instrument and we take care of it, how we see fit and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I see you. I, I see you looking at Lemmy over there. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's like, like that dude, uh, I read a story about him. He went to the doctor and they were doing blood work and they were like, man, we, we think you might need a blood transfusion, but if we transfuse your blood, it's going to we think it might kill you. And he's like, why is it? Cause your blood is so toxic from all the drugs and stuff. <laughs> oh my God. Ooh. Yeah. How <laughs> wild is that? Yeah. That would be pretty messed up. <laughs> so uh, for you guys, when you're booking, do you guys book your own tours or do you have an agent that does it now? Um, We book through, so continental tour. Okay. It, yeah. We have an agent through there. Um, That's who's, super incredible so she did our last one and, and that's who this next one is but yeah that's who does our booking right on when did she come into play for you all last summer or last fall yeah last fall okay and otherwise before that um we had a previous booking agent who was incredible um also in between there like doing diy stuff um it's kind of just progressed through the years and the 
like people that we've met and the relationships that we've met or made at venues. Um, so yeah, we're just, we're lucky now to have, have this relationship with Continental and have them, you know, go into bat for us and everything. Yeah. It's, it's nice to have someone in that role that, that does it and has already built some relationships to, to get you into places and yeah. potentially on right. Some bigger tours, which is yeah. obviously That's is, the goal. Yeah, That's the goal. <laughs> absolutely. Um, is there a band out there that you're like this to tour with this band is exactly what I want to do. That's all I want to do. I always say cannibal corpse. That would to me be everything. Um, I always say I would love to tour with Entheos. Um, I am obsessed with frozen soul. So I would love to tour with them. Um, Jungle Rot is, is our like, we want to tour with those dudes so badly. Um, but yeah, those are, those are the big ones really. Now frozen souls on that, um, on that cannibal corpse tour. And they just did, uh, red, red rock. Yeah. How fucking yeah, the video cool is that? From that is so cool. Yeah. 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 First metal, you know, like death metal show at red rocks. Like, yeah put that on my fucking resume how f yeah that is oh my gosh i was watching videos of that constantly because i was following i follow sam on after a couple times um on instagram and everything and oh my gosh the videos she was posting so cool yeah dude so i'm so excited when when the more extreme bands are breaking those barriers and doing those yep. things you know yeah like so our market here I mean, you guys have played, um, in, in my opinion, it's, it's a smaller, it's a smaller market, right? Like it just yep. is. Yep. Um, so when, when bigger bands like Cannibal Corpse come through, we're, we're looking at like seven to 900 people maybe showing up. Yep. Well, they come through, uh, last year. Was it last year they toured with Mayhem and uh, Blood Incantation and Gore Guts, or was it the year before? Ooh. I don't think it was last year. Yeah, it was probably 22. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, they came through and uh, two, I think the venue holds 2,000 people and it sold out so fast. I was like, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. To see that, to see like people were packed in that place like sardines. Like, all right. Yeah. This is the show that I want. Yep. What's your your favorite band that you've seen live? You're like, man, I that band just absolutely blew me away. I didn't expect them to be that good. Um definitely frozen soul um last year at milwaukee metal fest um i was really looking forward to seeing them and then seeing them live was like oh my god uh jungle rot uh black dahlia murder who are my 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 favorite band um i'm the biggest fangirl for them but uh yeah yeah those three for absolute sure right on that's cool i think we've seen I haven't, I don't know that I've seen Frozen Soul. Highly recommend. I f maybe, maybe I have, but I don't, I don't know. Too many shows, right? Uh, <laughs> so God. many shows. Yeah. I mean, I I think I was at four last week. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not playing. I'm just going. <laughs> yeah. That's so rad. That's life. Uh, yeah. Being an old man with older kids. <laughs> so well uh what was that? i was going to ask you a question and it just went wasn't so important i guess <laughs> uh tell me a funny tour story oh my gosh oh we had one this i'm trying to remember it now because i was like that's going to be the funny 
story that I tell on tour. And now that's escaped me. Um, there's so many of them. We, we prank each other constantly. Um, I don't know. It's not really funny, but I, I, in on one of our tours, I almost took a punch for our drummer on accident. Oh. Not on accident. I didn't think before I inserted myself in the middle of this punch. Um, I was just trying to protect everyone. <laughs> Um, some guy got super drunk at, at one of the shows and was messing with the drums and got told to stop messing with the drums and didn't like that. I went to throw a punch and I saw it and I stepped right in the middle to try and break it up. And, um, Austin took the back of my hoodie and pulled it back and was like, no, <laughs> um, I diffused the situation and it was fine. Um, God, I can like I feel like I had a really funny story to tell and now I cannot think of it at all. <laughs> That's okay. There have been just, so many. Yeah. There there's always like tour mishaps where you're like, oh, this is like a comedy of errors. What the hell are we doing here? Yeah, yeah. Constantly. Constantly. <laughs> so with you guys working on the new album, obviously between touring, what what do you think timeline for finishing releases? So right now our plan um, is our deadline for like writing and, and like, well, for getting everything recorded is October of this year. Okay. So, and then after that, we'll kind of develop um, when the release will be probably early 2025 so that we have some time to like get everything done. Um, because I feel like this year already has gone super quick um yeah. it's already may and we're already starting to look into booking um for touring next year so that's crazy um so yeah that is our timeline right now fitting in the recording sessions when we are home um we didn't load ourselves up through touring all of the summer for that specific reason we're playing some festivals in the coming months um after these tours and then more that are going to be announced shortly um and then we're working on some fall stuff but yeah the the heavy emphasis is going to be on completing the recording for the album because we do have a pretty solid deadline of october for getting everything done yeah i mean you guys are uh i mean at this point you're almost two years since since rituals was released yeah yep yeah. And by that point it will be two years. So yeah. we're, we're ready. <laughs> Let's do this shit. Yeah. But we will have a single before then. So okay. there will be new music um, soon. <laughs> How soon? Um, I don't have an exact release date yet, but very soon. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I like to, I yeah. like those words. Yeah. Yeah. Rock and roll. Well, Megan, um, I want to say thank you. I greatly appreciate you coming to hang out and talk with me. It was fun talking with you and, and Corey and his like, hey, I'm here. And now I'm gone. Yeah. Giving uh, a guitar lesson right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I greatly appreciate it. I I really I wish you guys all the success in the world. Um, and I, I honestly can't wait to see you guys live again. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Uh, this was an absolute blast. We'll have to do it again once the album's out. Yeah. Hell, hell yeah, we will. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Go have yourself a great night. Thank you so much. You too. Thanks. See ya.